Welcome back everybody to the lecture on computer graphics. Uh, we are into the second lecture of uh, three dimensional transformations. Okay. In the first lecture we had seen the uh, general form of the transformation matrix and also the significance of the different parameters uh, in three dimensional space using homogeneous Cartesian coordinate form of representation of a point, we basically have uh, uh, four uh, elements forming a row or a column vector to represent a point in 3D and henceforth the transformation matrix is basically a 4 cross 4 matrix. Okay? And we had seen the uh, uh, in the partition matrix uh, that the top left 3 cross 3 are, are responsible for all the affine transformations typically. Uh, uh, that is uh, rotation, reflection, scale, shear and the two row matrices are responsible for perspective transformation and translation. So, we have seen the uh, cases of uh, reflection, shear uh, as well as uh, translation in the last class and mostly uh, we have spent a lot of time discussing in depth about uh, uh, rotation matrices uh, and Cartesian coordinate form. and. Uh, uh, the generalized expression of uh, uh, a rotation matrix about an arbitrary axis in space in 3D. Okay? So, we will probably just touch upon that, we will uh, start from where we left in the last class, so that to maintain continuity and also uh, since uh, the concept about rotation about an arbitrary axis in space is very, very important and that concept also is borrowed on to uh, rotation uh, reflection about an arbitrary plane, uh, also we will see that the same type of uh, concepts are used. We will probably look into the fact that uh, uh, how did we do a rotation about an arbitrary axis in space. Remember in three dimensional Cartesian coordinate form left and right hand system we have an arbitrary axis for which the direction cosines are known and we have to rotate uh, by an angle theta okay? and a point or an object in 3D must be rotated uh, by an amount theta uh, and uh, we look back into the uh, uh, a slide and we find that uh, uh, the, the steps of this transformation are all given to you. So, we assume that we want to perform a rotation by theta degrees uh, as you can read about an axis in space passing through a point. So, the axis must be passing through a point x naught, y naught, z naught and the direction cosines of that axis are c x, c y and c z respectively. Okay? The corresponding we need three parameters for direction cosines. Now, we will see later on how direction cosines can be specified uh, if you are not clear about it. Um, I uh, You must go back and read coordinate geometry books about direction cosines. First of all, uh, so the, let us go through the steps. The first step says translate by an amount t depending upon x naught, y naught, z naught. The number two step is next we rotate the axis onto one of the principal axis and that was the important step which we discussed. That means, uh, we need to rotate about x and then about i, uh, y and that will help uh, the axis coincide with the z axis and once that is done, we rotate in the third step by an amount theta degrees about the z axis for which the expression of the rotation matrix uh, elements are all known to us and then we undo the rotation that means in step number 4 and 5 we undo whatever we did in 2 and 1. So, once 2 is known, 4 is known, expression for 3 is known and 1 and 5 are very straightforward because they are translation. So, you just revisit what we did in step number 2 because that is the most important part. Once 2 is the step 2 is solved, all the others fall in place. So, let us look at step number 2. Uh, the figure which describes and helps us to understand the uh, rotation about the x and the y axis and will place the axis O p and uh, uh, along with the z axis. So, if you look at the figure uh, Cartesian coordinate system again x y z O p is the axis about which we have to rotate by an amount theta and uh, 
this axis OP must coincide with uh, the Z axis and then we can rotate about Z. And so, the step number 2 involves two smaller steps in fact, one is rotating by an amount alpha about the X axis and then by an amount beta about the Y axis and the, so two rotations of the axis OP one about X which will bring the axis OP on the XZ plane. You have to visualize yourself, I will show in the next figure that if you rotate by an amount alpha about the X axis, the axis OP will now fall on the Z X axis. So, that is the first step of rotation for step number 2. So, after first step of rotation of the axis OP, it has now fallen on the XZ plane. So, this figure shows that the first step of rotation is over and, uh, uh, and then we have to rotate by an amount beta uh, about the Y axis and that will place the axis OP on the Z axis. Okay. So, I will I'll roll this figure back for you to visualize properly how the axis OP has coincided with the XZ plane. So, this was the first scenario. So, you have to visualize in 3D that if you rotate about the X axis by an amount alpha and of course, uh, uh, the uh, direction cosine C X, C Y, C Z etcetera uh, are also shown in the figure. The small d is basically uh, root over uh, square root over of C Y square plus C Z square and uh, the, those so using those values of d and C Y we can find out the value of alpha and once the, the rotation about alpha takes place the next figure is which has been shown to you earlier is that axis OP now coincides with the Z x uh, plane and then again you rotate by an amount of beta because beta is known because C x and D are all known. We have done this in the last class and uh, the OP will coincide with the Z axis. Okay. So, coming back to the final transformation matrix for 3D rotation about an arbitrary axis, the first transformation is the rotation. Then I am um, excuse me, first transformation is a translation followed by two rotations about x and y, finally about z and then undo in the opposite uh, sequence r y inverse, r x inverse and t inverse respectively, where the corresponding expressions for the matrices t, r x rotation about x is given here, rotation about uh, y is given here. We all derived this in the last class, but just revisiting again and I also requested you to uh, multiply all these matrices and get the final form for m, it will be a 4 cross 4 matrix uh, and the final rotation about z, this we all know. So, to apply this z, we actually have to use t, r x and r y, t will help the origin to move to the line or the line to move to the origin, r x and r y will help the axis OP coincide with the z axis where we can use r z to rotate about the z axis. So, this is the final expression. Okay. Actually, we stopped here in the last class and uh, a small addition point here which may be noted is about the direction cosines of the axis. Okay. So, you, you may be uh, given two endpoints of the axis or two arbitrary points on the axis about which the rotation has to take place and uh, from geometry actually you can find the direction cosines of a line from any two point coordinates on the line uh, using the expression as given here on the screen. So, if you are given two points instead instead of the direction cosines and these two points are lying on the axis of rotation as given in the bracket, then you can calculate the direction cosines of the axis using the expression as given below. You know you can compute V and then you compute uh, C X, C Y, C Z where V is the length of the vector V, V is the length of the vector V. Okay. So, this is how you compute C X, C Y and C Z respectively. Well, uh, using the same concepts, we move on to reflection through an arbitrary plane and uh, we remember as we had rotation about an arbitrary axis uh, and the axis had to be con coincided or basically brought in line with the z axis. Similarly, now if we have an arbitrary plane and we need to provide a reflection, uh, we cannot uh, do that straight away. What we have to now do is uh, bring this plane and coincide with one of the orthogonal uh, coordinate planes x y z x or x y y z or z x and then we are can apply the reflection matrix. Okay. So, the concept is similar that is why uh, uh, to the uh, concept of uh, uh, rotation about an arbitrary axis only there we apply employ rotation uh, with respect to z axis here we actually in the middle apply or uh, employ reflection. Okay. So, method is similar to that of rotation about an arbitrary axis and conceptually similar I am uh, I hope you can understand the sequence uh, with respect to the expression as given here and you can compare this expression with the expression given for a generalized rotation about an arbitrary axis as you can see that the pattern of the expression is same in terms of sequence of matrix multiplications only the middle matrix R z is, repl is replaced by a reflection matrix R f l. RFL is the reflection matrix about uh, one of the uh, x, y, y, z or z explains and that is what is put instead of 
Rz in the previous transformation matrix when we talked about rotation about an arbitrary axis. So, come coming back to reflection about an arbitrary plane. So, we are talking of these different forms. So, T does the job of translating the origin to the plane as like is in the previous case Rx and Ry will rotate basically the vector normal of the reflection plane uh, at the origin uh, and it will do that until it is coincident with the z axis. Okay. So, when you are uh, rotating uh, R, uh, b, b, uh, the normal to the reflection plane using R x and R y, you can assume that this vector normal is nothing but uh, uh, similar to the, uh, the, uh, the, the axis about which you were rotating. Okay. So, you can visualize that O p axis you remember when we rotated about an arbitrary axis O p that O p can be visualized to be a normal to a reflection plane. So, when we are actually rotating the axis and concerning it with the z plane it is uh, the same thing is done here only what happen is we are not doing rotation, but we are doing a reflection and now after the R x and R y operations of rotation successive rotations the reflection plane which was arbitrarily in space will now coincide with the uh, uh, x y plane or the because the normal has coincided with the plus z z so this is a plus z. So, and this is the x y. So, the plane has become x y and we can have employ a reflection across or about the uh, x y plane which expression for which it is known. So, R f uh, f l is the reflection matrix about x y plane or z equal to 0 plane. Okay. Uh, so, that is uh, uh, understood. So, we move on to uh, different concepts of uh, three dimensional uh, transformations now. Basically, we have uh, understood the different affine transformations of rotation, reflection, scale and shear in the last class. We have studied in greater depth about arbitrary rotations, arbitrary reflection, translation also we know the most uh, the, the in fact the only transformation which is left now is the projective transformation or perspective transformations. And before we uh, learn or understand more about it, we will just go through a few terminologies which are necessary to understand about uh, projective geometry and uh, whether it is perspective or orthographic. And we need to know about what are called the spaces. Okay. There are various types of spaces existing in uh, both coordinate geometry and computer graphics literature. Object space, okay. we talked about object modeling not in details in any previous lecture, but in the introduction where we say that you have to basically define the geometry and then define your object its location, its size, its parameters and attributes and they are defined with respect to an a space, three dimensional space or two dimensional space mostly 3 D in this case since we are talking about three dimensional transformation. So, let us visualize everything in 3 D you have to define an object in 3 D and it is defined in the object space. It is also called the modeling space where you can model a sphere, a cylinder, simple objects or any complex structures. Uh, made up of building blocks uh, like uh, we will talk about 3D modeling more later on, but you can visualize small small objects can be joined together and made a complex object. So, and that those objects are all defined in the object space or modeling space. Okay. We also have the world space where you have to position the object somewhere in the world. Okay. So, you have made your objects you need to position them, uh, orient them you know, um, uh, and scale them if necessary and position them basically somewhere with respect to the world coordinate system and that is what is called the world space where the see, seen and the viewing specification is made. Okay. And of course, now we have the normalized viewing space or I space where we defined a COP term called the center of projection. We will find out it is called the I point uh, uh, where it is the origin. Uh, the I point or the center of projection, the COP will define that later on in the next couple of slides is at the origin and we are basically looking down the z axis. So, that is the I space or the normalized viewing space. Sometimes this space and the world space sometimes are considered to be identical, but they could be different. Okay. Nobody stops you from having two different spaces. 3D image space, yes, we need it for the projection space. So, we are talking of a 3D projective space where the dimensions are all normalized. The dimensions are in the range minus 1 to plus 1 in x and y axis and it is in 0 to 1 in the z axis. So, basically it is something like a, a three dimensional rectangular parallelepiped, not exactly a cube uh, because the z axis dimension is less than the x and y rectangular parallelepiped. We will see basically this projective uh, normalized 3D image space later on if not in this lecture when we talk about uh, uh, different algorithms for uh, projective geometry and uh, trying to draw three dimensional pictures. This is very very important and it is where we will say that the 
image space hidden surface algorithms work hidden space uh, al surface algorithms work in image space to help you in uh, rendering objects which are facing the viewer we will understand all those uh, but uh, you just have to know now that the 3d image space runs from minus 1 to plus 1 in the x and y domain and uh, from 0 to 1 in the z z axis Okay. And the last of them is the screen space which you are basically viewing a screen space is a 2D space on which the entire world or the entire uh, 3D pictures will be projected and its uh, range run from 0 to a certain value depending upon the width and the height of the screen. Typically uh, for a normal VGA it could be 64480 or for a high resolution we have seen that it could run to 1024 pixels. It depends upon the pixels and the window size you choose on the screen, the screen space is defined from 0 to a particular value. So, we move on to the projection geometry now, okay. that is the one which is uh, left over and uh, we will look at several planar geometric 3D to 2D projections, out of them of course, we will describe at length a few fundamental ones depending upon the time limits we have which are very, very useful of course, but there are other types of projection geometries which are used in engineering designs and drawings, uh, especially in the field of mechanical engineering or civil engineering which we will just mention, but we will uh, talk about those which are used extensively in the field of computer graphics and uh, the literary literature. Okay. So, 3D to 2D projection geometry and essentially we will say that there are essentially two different types of projection geometries. Let us uh, be very specific here, one is called the parallel projection or the parallel uh, projection geometry and the other one is called the perspective geometry. So, there are two types and again parallel we will say that there are essentially again could be two types, one is orthographic or oblique. Of course, there are other types of parallel projections also we will name them, we will look at a chart, but typically under parallel projections we will look into to orthographic projections and oblique projections of parallel projections under that category and in the perspective projection also there are two, three different categories and we will touch upon them as well as we proceed. Okay. So, what is a projection? We need to define what is a projection here. We are talking of a projection of a 3D object which is defined by straight projection rays called the projectors. Okay, light rays, you can visualize them to be light rays coming out of the object and getting inside the screen. So, there is something like pro called projector rays or projectors or projection rays which are emanating out from the center of projection or COP, we will use a diagram to define what is a COP or a center of projection and passing through each point of the object and intersects the projection plane. So, it is a ray, it is a straight line, you can traverse any direction on the ray, but typically you can say it starts from a center of projection and passes through the object and hits the projection plane or hits the screen. Okay. So, that is uh, where you have this uh, concept of uh, projector rays coming out of the center of projection. Also, the reverse uh, uh, could be also considered where rays come out of the screen, pass through the object and hit in the uh, move towards the center of projection, but typically we will notionally uh, visualize that the rays come out of the center of projection. So, that is a projection space. I think we look into a figure to understand what do you mean by projections here. Let us look into the next slide. Well, classifications of different geometrical projections here, uh, all types of uh, and projections are given in this layout, but as I said before, uh, we will classify them under two categories called the parallel and perspective as given here. So, planar geometric projections fall under two categories parallel and perspective. Under parallel you have orthographic and oblique which we will discuss here and under perspective we will have one point, two point and three point perspective projections. We will understand and see uh, in this lecture what are these one point, two point and three point uh, uh, projection systems under the category of perspective projections and under parallel what are orthographic and oblique projections. Again, uh, although we will not discuss in detail about these subclasses under orthographic or oblique, as I said before, most of these are very useful for CAD designs in mechanical, civil and architectural designs. But under orthographic, you have the top plan view, the front elevation view, the side elevation view or what is called the axonometric view. We will see the isometric category under axonometric which will give you an idea of what is the orthographic projection. And also under oblique projection, we will have a cabinet, cab valier and other type of oblique projections also. So, we will see under orthographic projections what is uh, axonometric or isometric projections and what is what are oblique projections as well. Okay. So, these are the different categories and classes and subclasses of geometric projections. We do not need to get into depth of all different subcategories, the main important ones we will definitely touch upon. 
ok. So, we will first move on to perspective projections which is very natural to the human eye any uh, camera system which you see digital cameras analog cameras uh, the cameras which sit on the satellite typically follow the nature or uh, rule of perspective geometry or perspective projections our eyes also follow the same uh, notion of perspective projections and we will see how uh, what what are the laws in terms of both optics and geometrical relationship which relate the three dimensional quantities in space to the two dimensional projections of which we are available on the screen in case of of a perspective projection ok. We define what is called as the in case of perspective projection that the distance from the center of projection or COP. Now, we are probably using this term quite often the COP is a very common term we must get to a figure very soon to understand what is the COP in terms of projection rays it will come uh, very soon. But right now we assume that COP is a point in 3D space in the world world space it is a point and uh, the rays are coming out of the center of projection passing through the object and hitting the screen. And now we are talking of the distance of the center of projection distance of the center of projection to the projection plane ok. We say that from center of projection the rays are coming out and going to the projection plane. So, the distance between the physical distance between the projection plane and the COP is finite. Of course, you can immediately guess that if it is infinite it becomes orthographic projection in, in the case of perspective projection this distance is finite ok. The projectors are not hence parallel and we specify we have to specify a center of projection or if there is another term called the projector reference point projective reference point PRP or COP here they are used interchangeably we will see what is this particular point. But this is the uh, definition of perspective projection where the distance is considered to be finite. So, center of projection is also called a perspective reference point or projective reference point as we talked about. So, COP and PRP we will probably use in, uh, uh, interchangeably and you should not get confused they basically we will assume that for that both of these mean the same thing the center of projection COP or PRP called the projective reference point both of these mean the same point ok. Let us uh, get to a few more terminologies before getting into the figure and the equations which derive the relationship of, uh, of uh, projective geometry. One is perspective foreshortening. Now, this is a very important concept here which comes in perspective geometry. It says that the size of the perspective projection of the object that means after the object has been projected on the screen uh, then that size varies inversely with the distance of the object from the COP or center of projection. That means, the size is inversely proportional to the distance of the object from the COP that means, closer the distance is or shorter the distance is larger is the object, larger is the distance smaller is the object. This is very uh, uh, easy to understand if you take any object and it could be a ball or any other object and you bring it closer to your eye or closer to your camera it will appear bigger uh, uh, um, uh, and if you take it away from the viewer that is yourself or from the camera typically it will tend to appear very small. Okay. So, that means, perspective projection does not give you the actual um, idea of what is the size of the object because a small object closer to you could appear bigger and uh, a large object which is uh, quite far away from you may appear smaller. A typical example, when we look at the sky and try to observe the sun and the moon typically of course, it is very difficult to visualize both of them or see both of them together on the sky sometimes they are visible, but typically in the daytime if you uh, try to uh, uh, understand the size of the sun and in the uh, full moon day, uh, full moon nights uh, try to observe the size of the moon. Typically, in most cases, you will find that the size of the moon, which is clearly visible on the on a clear sky, appears much, much, much larger and bigger than the size of the sun. Now, we know all from uh, basic uh, knowledge of science and geography that the size of the sun is many, many times larger than the size of the moon. Why moon? It's much, much more uh, larger than the size of the earth, and definitely much, much more than the. Uh, size of the moon, but in spite of being such a large object the sun it is so far away compared to the distance of the earth and the moon that the sun typically appears almost of the same size or even smaller than the moon when we look 
through our eye or through any camera because this is because of the nature of the perspective geometry or perspective projection. It is and this concept which you can see for yourself take an object a large object uh, a, a ball it could be a football or a tennis ball or a cricket ball whatever the case may be and bring it closer to your eye you will find that or closer to a camera you will find that the size of the object grows bigger and when you take it away from the viewer or take it away from the camera the, the size of the object starts to shrink. Okay. Uh, this is an effect of perspective foreshortening because this the, the sentence as it states on the screen that the size of the projection of the object varies inversely with the distance. So, distance large size is going down if the distance is becoming shorter the size goes up sun and the moon was an example I talked about you can try this experiment yourself right now with any particular object take an object far away from you appears too smaller and when you bring it closer it appears bigger. So, that is the concept of what is called perspective foreshortening we will see with examples of equation how we can model this. There is a concept of a vanishing point in uh, perspective geometry where well, let us uh, read the definition as given in the screen and then I will uh, try to explain what is this vanishing point. Also we have figures uh, describing what is a vanishing point. Uh, this uh, definition says that the perspective projection of any set of parallel lines that are not parallel to the projection plane converge to a vanishing point. Now, this is a very interesting and a confusing uh, definition if you have not heard see this concept of a converging and parallel. Now, we know all from geometry that parallel lines lines which are parallel never intersect even at infinity or basically in, in, intersect at infinity, but we are saying we are talking of a finite point called a vanishing point where these parallel lines tend to converge or meet in the projection geometry or in the projection plane. I will take give a simple example of how to visualize this vanishing point. Uh, well, if, if you stand yourself on uh, a, a high road, uh, okay, a long straight road, preferably linear and straight, you can stand on a railway line. Of course, you have to be very careful that uh, you, know, you do not uh, uh, take up the hazards of uh, now standing when there is traffic on either the road or on the rail track, but assuming those things are taken care of and you are able to stand yourself on a rail track or a road in the center and look along the direction of the road sitting on the standing on the center of the road or on the rail track and assuming that the road and the rail whatever the case may be is straight. And what do you find? You know that the end of the two roads or the rail tracks are parallel that is how uh, the railway line moves, but as you keep looking longer and longer uh, further away from you along the rail track you can start to visualize it seems now as you go towards the horizon or towards the end of the rail track when you start looking you are not traveling you are standing basically those two lines tend to meet. As, uh, they, they, they seem to converge at some point which is at a very very far distance the distance you probably cannot see where they are probably meeting, but you know okay at some point they are meeting because you are seeing a perspective projection of a point at infinity and a perspective projection of a point at infinity can be finite. This vanishing point is a point which is actual at infinity why because this is the point where two parallel lines meet two parallel the two tracks of the railway line you know since they are parallel they will only meet at infinity. So, that point is at infinity, but the projection is a finite point it is called the vanishing point because that projection when we take onto the uh, projection plane which is your eye when you are seeing that railway track uh, the it is called the vanishing point it is a finite point in a two dimensional plane. We will see with an example what is this vanishing point and what is uh, and it is also related in some sense with perspective foreshortening not, not very directly in indirect manner and here is the example of a projection uh, perspective projection geometry and a and a z axis vanishing point. Here uh, there are two figures as you see on the screen they are actually same uh, let, uh, let me explain the taking the left hand side first because that is I will say is a 3D diagram whereas the right side one is a uh, is a two dimensional diagram I must say this is uh, given in the book by Foley Vandam and from there we have borrowed it and uh, uh, this is a basically a cube sitting where the x y axis is coinciding with two uh, with one plane uh, of the rectangular parallel pipette and z axis is the viewing direction and typically if you see for yourself that uh, if I take the four lines which are supposed to be parallel lines because it is a cube uh, and those four parallel lines are parallel to all z axis, but they are not parallel to the to the viewing plane or the projection plane. 
Okay, and if that is so, those lines which actually never meet in 3D appear to meet at uh, a point. Um, uh, uh, as you see on the left hand side figure as drawn so you have typically tend to have a trapezoidal figure you can extrapolate those lines or extend those lines yourself by scale and they will meet at a point called the z axis vanishing point. Why it is called a z axis vanishing point? Because that vanishing point is obtained by extrapolating or extending lines any two lines you can take in this case I have taken four lines, but you can take any two lines which are parallel to z axis. And since the z axis is not parallel in this case to your viewing plane or the screen uh, the way the 3D diagram shows henceforth those the projections of those two lines will not be parallel and if they are not parallel on the screen they will meet and they meet at a point called the vanishing point which is a finite point on the screen that point actually is an infinite point in 3D, but it is a finite point in two dimensional screen and is called z axis vanishing point. Again I repeat it is called z axis vanishing point because the lines which uh, the parallel lines which uh, meet on the projection plane or the screen to form the vanishing point are all parallel to x and uh, parallel to x uh, z axis. Remember if you take lines which are parallel to x and y they will not form a vanishing point in this case because uh, typically we assume that especially uh, especially to do with the um, um, y axis because if the projection the y axis is parallel to uh, the uh, projection plane. Now, if we look at the same diagram and we change it slightly such that now we make the screen exactly parallel to the xy plane. Now, the viewing geometry in the left hand side diagram was such that the viewing axis was neither parallel to xyz it was, uh, it was only assumed parallel to be y axis. Now, now we are putting the viewing uh, plane or the projection plane on the x y plane and we are looking through the uh, rectangular parallel paper that z axis vanishing point can be obtained in a similar manner as the left hand side diagram by by extending or extrapolating the four lines four parallel lines which are parallel to z axis and they now form this it, in fact both the points which are uh, pointed by the z axis vanishing point basically are the same point but they are from two different perspective geometric reference points. That means, the projection plane has shifted and that is why the z axis vanishing point has shifted is in, but you will always get a vanishing point whenever you are taking parallel lines and those parallel lines are not parallel to your projection geometry or plane. Remember, if you take the horizontal or vertical lines of your cube as you can see especially on the right hand side diagram and those form a parallel line they will never meet in the projection plane or in the screen because they are parallel lines in 3D as well as in 2D. When you take parallel lines which are not parallel to the projection screen and they are they will intersect the projection uh, plane on the screen and they will actually meet those project lines which are parallel to z axis in this case intersect the projection plane and henceforth they also are not parallel to the uh, uh, to each other and they will meet at a point called the vanishing point. So, I hope the idea is clear you have to draw this diagram yourself to visualize what this please uh, take a pencil and a paper and a scale and draw this diagram try to visualize itself uh, and see what do you mean by the z axis vanishing point. We will go to the equations of perspective geometry and you can actually I will leave it as an, I will leave it as an exercise for you to find out the equation of the vanishing point because it is a finite point you should be able to find out the expression or the value of the vanishing point given a, a set of parallel lines and the projection geometry. Okay. Now, this is the typical example of a projection plane uh, or the projective geometry where um, as you can see you have an x y z axis the three dimensional scenario and you have the same cube or rectangular parallel pipette and now you have the first time the central projection which is marked as a large dot here in the center of the screen. This is the COP or the PRP perspective reference point or center of projection COP or PRP and rays come out of the COP or PRP cross the projection plane and intersect the object. 
actually the, if the projection plane is kept behind uh, the object that is also not a problem, the rays will actually pass through the object hypothetically uh, and uh, uh, may not be actually passing through, but uh, since they are all virtual rays in computer graphics virtual reality plays a very big uh, role and it has contributed to many aspects in virtual reality. So, virtually rays can pass through the screen and hit the object or pass through the object and hit the screen if the screen is behind the object. Okay. So, right now what I have done is in this picture I have taken four arbitrary vertices of the uh, three dimensional structure and join the center of projection to the corresponding vertices of the object and wherever uh, the those projector rays projection rays or projectors as you call it intersect the projection plane as given here uh, the grey colored uh, plane here we form get the projection of that point on the projection plane and if the projection plane normal is also given here. So, that projection plane normal in this case we can assume it to be along the z axis. So, central projection is uh, on the positive z point and looking towards negative z or you are looking towards origin and rays intersect the plane and then strike the object and you get the projection of that three dimensional structure on the projection. So, this is the diagram which illustrates what is uh, my central projection which is at a finite distance from the projection plane and uh, the object actually could lie between the projection plane and the COP or it could lie behind the projection plane. Nobody uh, stops you from uh, visualizing and considering any sort of scenario where uh, the projection plane could be almost anywhere uh, with respect to the COP and the corresponding object. So, now you can see you can now try to visualize the diagrams of the vanishing point with respect to this figure. This was the diagram which was illustrating the vanishing point. Remember uh, there is no COP here in the true sense we are not able to see the COP and do not confuse the z axis vanishing point with the COP z axis vanishing point or any vanishing point comes due to the intersection of parallel lines projections of parallel lines in 3D are taken or their projections are taken and they become not uh, they become uh, they are not uh, parallel anymore in the projection plane and when they if they are not parallel they will meet. If they are not parallel they will meet in 3D they are parallel, but in the projection plane they are not parallel and hence they will intersect to form a finite uh, point in 2D called the z axis vanishing point. Z axis vanishing point or any vanishing point is a finite point in 2D and it is basically a projection of an infinite a point at infinity where parallel lines in 3D will meet. So, that is very interesting and in this case center of projection is a again a virtual, but is easy to visualize this is more to do with projector rays. To get a projection of an object on the projection plane you need the center projection to be defined with respect to the axis and the projection plane uh, and it is normal uh, otherwise you cannot draw the rays. Once the COP is defined you draw the rays from the COP or PRP to the object intersection of those rays with the projection plane will give you the projection points and you can construct the projection of a 3D object onto 2D. Well, we have talked about z axis vanishing point. This is an example of a x axis vanishing point and z axis vanishing point together um, uh, to describe again. And uh, as you see here, that the center of projection is defined, uh, we have x, y, z axis here. Uh, I hope you can see it and then we have again have a cube defined here and x, y, z. So, the one of the vertices of the cube is at the origin of the coordinate system. We have a projection plane interestingly this projection plane is uh, we assume that uh, is parallel to the y axis. The z and the x axis intersect that plane, but the y axis does not intersect that plane because we can assume that it is the y axis is parallel to the projection plane and as long as uh, the uh, the the uh, y axis uh, does not intersect the projection plane any lines which are parallel to y axis will also be parallel um, in the projection plane after they are projected. So, now as you can see here since the x axis and z axis will intersect the projection plane uh, and uh, what I have done basically is taken all the 4 plus 4 about uh, uh, exactly uh, basically 8 vertices of the cube and try to project all of them on the projection plane. The, the process is very simple as I told you, you have to take all the 8 vertices and draw projector lines or rays from the vertices to the COP or take lines join the COP to the vertices wherever these lines intersect the projection plane you mark those points those are the projections of the vertices in 3D onto the projection plane. And you can join the respective vertices in 2D and create the projection of the 3 dimensional cube 
on the uh, two dimensional uh, projection plane. Now, this you can do for any object which has vertices uh, or even curves and then you can take point by point and keep projecting uh, drawing lines to the center of projection COP and get the projection points on the projection plane and reconstruct the 2D diagram. This is all possible, but here we are talking of more than one uh, vanishing point on the projection plane. Okay. More than one uh, uh, vanishing point because as you can see here uh, lines which are parallel to the z axis, lines which are parallel to the z axis will be, uh, can be projected onto the projection plane, but they will not be parallel anymore. They will not be parallel anymore because the z axis intersects the uh, projection plane and hence the projections of parallel lines, lines which are parallel to z axis will now meet at one point called the z axis vanishing point. Similarly, lines which are parallel to x axis will also not be parallel anymore to the projection plane and they will meet and form x axis vanishing point. Why do not we have a y axis vanishing point? I did tell, tell you that we are assuming in this figure it is again borrowed from the book by uh, Foley, Vandam, four authors uh, on computer graphics principles and practice where this diagram shows that these uh, four lines of the cube which are all parallel to y axis form parallel lines as projections on the projection plane. That means, if you take these four lines on the cube which are all parallel to y axis since the projection plane is also parallel, since the projection plane is also parallel to the y axis this parallel lines in 3D will also form parallel lines in the projection plane. I you can try this out uh, using the COP uh, and it is also almost evident in this figure as vertical lines which are all four vertical lines you can see in 3D of this cube, you know two, uh, uh, three continuous line and one dashed line at the back. There are three one plus one four such vertical lines of the cube and they have formed four vertical lines on the projection planes and these four lines have remained parallel. They have remained parallel because the y axis does not intersect the projection plane. If you till the projection plane and make the y axis intersect the projection plane, then these vertical lines will not remain parallel in the 2D after they have been projected. But in this case I kept repeating that uh, the projection plane is parallel to y axis and all vertical lines which are parallel to y axis are also remain parallel in 2D and so they will not meet in 2D and hence we do not have a y axis vanishing point. Since the x and z axis meet the projection plane all four lines which are parallel to z axis will not remain parallel on the projection plane and they will intersect and form a z axis vanishing point and all lines which are parallel to x axis okay, they will not remain parallel on the projection plane. Uh, once they are projected and they will form x axis vanishing point. So, this is interesting that you can have a one uh, vanishing point, one point, two point or three point uh, projection uh, system and uh, typically for simplicity one axis vanishing point is uh, usually chosen, but you can have a two axis x and z vanishing point. You can also have x, y and z axis vanishing point where you take the projection plane uh, in such a manner that all the axes intersect the none of the axes is parallel to the projection plane they will intersect at one point and if that is the case where all the three axes meet at some point uh, with the projection plane and none of them are parallel then you also have a three uh, axis vanishing point x, y and z respectively. So, you remember the diagram which we talked about where we had three different types of uh, uh, projective geometry one was uh, uh, one point, two point and three point they are nothing but an x, y or z in case of one point this is an example we have just seen of it two axis vanishing point or, uh, or, a, uh, or a two point projection geometry problem, we can also have a similarly a three point uh, perspective point which is nothing but three vanishing points or perspective geometry. We will uh, go through the equations of perspective geometry and camera models to understand before we move on to orthographic projection uh, and as we go along here uh, I have given a two dimensional projection of the three dimensional uh, geometry which we have just seen in a few slides before um, the uh, uh, van vanishing point or somewhere in between where we talked of a COP and uh, points coming out of the COP intersecting the projection plane and then going on and touching the point on the 3D. So, here if you see in the screen you assume your screen to be 
x and z or y and z. So, uh, if it is x, y is coming out towards you as you see on the screen. If it is a y z plane, your screen is a y z plane, x is coming out of you, does not matter. Uh, we have taken the origin of the coordinate system to be for our convenience for the time being. This is a special case, it is not general that the COP or the center of projection always has to be on the origin of the coordinate system, but in this case let us assume that. And the PP or the projection plane is at a distance f from the origin. This f is something similar to a focal length parameter or a perspective geometry uh, parameter and this uh, we will see that how it is related to the focal length of the lens as well, not directly of course, uh, but uh, this uh, let the PP or the projection plane be at a distance f from the origin or the COP in this case the same and a point in 3D is given by this point P x y z. So, the projection of this point P x y z on the projection plane P p can be easily obtained by the concept we talked about that is take a ray or join a line between P and O or COP and P. In this case since O and COP are same take a ray which starts from COP intersects the projection plane and goes and touches the point P or take a simple straight line which joins P and the COP or the origin in this case. Intersection of that ray, intersection of that ray with the projection plane gives the projection of a point P uh, in 3D onto the 2D plane PP. So, that I will mark it as XP. So, if the vertical axis is X, we have for corresponding X the XP or the X projection point and similarly if it, if, if this is Y instead, then uh, we should have YP. The subscript indicates that it is a 2D uh, geometrical uh, um, uh, value whereas XYZ capital letters indicate 3D coordinates of the point P. We will look at this uh, model from a slightly different angle. Now, with respect to uh, I will try to give an analogy with that diagram with respect to uh, the optical uh, 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 with concepts of optics which have typically happen in a camera. Um, uh, this is to do with the imaging models uh, talked about more in, in uh, classical areas such as image processing um, and uh, viewing geometry and all that. So, typically uh, if you look into the concepts of optics, you have a point in space all right at x, y, z and you are viewing that with a lens. Uh, this is typical in the case of your eye or in the camera, you have a lens in the front and a retina at the back side or you have an analog and digital camera where you have a lens in the front which you use to focus the earth object and you have a screen or, a, say, or a, an array of sensors in the back side if it is a digital camera. It is an analog camera if you have a photosensitive film on which the object is focused. So, and that concept of optics says that rays which come out of the point P pass through the optical center of the lens optical center of the lens pass through undeviated and will fall on the screen which we will call as the image plane in this case. It can be considered to be a projection plane. In this case we will take as an image plane IP and rays which are running parallel to what we call as the optical axis of the lens. In this case the horizontal axis Z is the optical axis of the lens. They will get deviated, they will deviate and bend and pass through a point which is a distance capital F from the lens. This is very interesting capital F from the lens and these two rays after they are bent and one they are undeviated they will actually if the object is actually focused properly this will actually go and meet at a particular point uh, on the uh, image plane x and y on the image plane x and y. Okay. Uh, well, if I remove the lens, now I can see, I can tell you that well, um, I will remove the lens and I will also remove the ray which is bent, I will take just a central line and replace the same figure with this model. So, this is done in most image processing concepts of perspective geometry where I will say that line passes through the projection plane uh, at the lens and the COP is somewhere where this point meets or basically what uh, you can visualize is uh, you can take the line undeviated which passes through the optical center of the lens and take the projection lens uh, the, sorry the projection screen in front of the lens between the object and the lens and when you have that then this point XP or YP comes here the origin becomes the COP the origin could be taken here and this is the projection plane X or Y and Z. So, there is is an almost uh, similarity or analogy which you have to visualize between this model considered for perspective geometry and the and the lens model which is coming out of optics theory okay and uh, we continue with the perspective geometry so this is the scenario which we were just talking about and this perspective uh, projection plane pp as a distance f from the origin or the center of projection uh, as it is called about p x y z is the point in 3d and this ray which join the cop and the point in 3d intersects the uh, projection plane at a point which has coordinate xp or yp depending upon whether the 
vertical axis is x or y respectively we are viewing along the z axis. Okay. Uh, this is one model, the other model where the origin is considered to be on the plane, projection plane and the COP is on the left side at a distance of minus f on the negative z axis and the ray which joins the COP and the point in 3D intersects the point PP again, but in this case the origin is taken to be uh, at, the, uh, at the intersection of the projection plane and the z axis instead of taking it at the COP and or COP is at a minus f. In this first figure the projection plane is at a distance of plus f from the origin, in this case the projection plane is at the origin COP is at a distance minus f. Uh, uh, in the negative z axis. So, now these are the two different uh, projective models which are uh, quite simplistic models, uh, this gives us very simplistic equations of course for perspective geometry, these are used in many image processing books as well, it is used in uh, many uh, um, computer graphics literatures as well and with respect to these two figures we will see what are the corresponding equations of these two figures, they are almost similar as you can see the structurally the figure is very same. Uh, just is a question of whether you move the origin, take it at the COP or you take it the origin at the projection plane itself is the question of course, the question of course which you should arise is where is the lens gone uh, as we talked about in a couple of slides back. Well, uh, the lens is there, but we have uh, derived this simple structure from the optics of the lens itself and we do not worry about the lens anymore. We are worried about the 3D object, the origin of the system and the projection plane where the projector ray which joins the COP and the point P intersect. So, that is the point where we have the projection of the 3D onto the 2D projection plane and that is all is interesting for us and that gives us very easy equations which you can write yourself now using similarity of triangles and derive equations and derive the expressions of x p or y p in terms of x y z and the f the parameter for projection. You know you can change that distance between O and C O P in this case or between uh, the projection plane and O and that uh, parameter f actually controls what is going to be the value of your a projection point x p or y p on the projection plane. Remember the projection plane is in 2D, so it is a small x y domain and the in the 3D the point is in x y and z domain. So, let us look at the equations of perspective geometry next corresponding to these two figures. I will give you two expressions and you can see they are very similar, a small difference uh, exists as like the small difference in these figures itself and here are the equations of perspective geometry. From the first figure you can use similarity of triangles and write expressions as given on the top, linear equations as x p by f is equal to x by z and y p by f is equal to y by z. I go back to that figure which we just discussed as you see from similarity of triangles here x p by f is equal to x by z okay. or y p by f is equal to y by z. You can uh, draw a vertical line here um, from the point p and drop the projection onto the z axis that will be your x or y and that divided by z will be your x p by the f the distance between projection projection plane and f. Okay. So, that is the uh, from similarity of triangles you can write those two equations as given here on the top and that gives us basically the relationship of the perspective geometry transformation matrix 4 by 4 as given here. P prime the projection obtained the projection uh, uh, of, uh, of a point on a 2D axis is uh, m power multiplied by a, the point P where the m power is the projection matrix as given here. It is almost an entity matrix except that the last row last column is not uh, unit it is 0 and the last row uh, you have to put a 1 by a factor. If you use this m power and then uh, use P as the x y z 1 in homogeneous form try to use this you will get, get a P prime as your uh, transform coordinates that we will give the expression as given on the top row. So, this is these are the equations with respect to the first figure. Let us uh, just also look at the expression as given in the second figure and this is the expression as given here um, x p by f is x by z plus f. This is with respect to the second figure uh, you can write these equations yourself again using similarity of triangles and these expressions when they are expressed in matrix form under perspective geometry will give a m power or the perspective transformation matrix as given here. You see that the expressions of both these matrices as I promised you earlier were same. This is actually an identity matrix with just the uh, one factor 1 by f uh, given here. In this case of course, the difference between the two matrices is the last or last column element is 0. So, the two matrices have uh, exactly similar nature except at uh, one location where the last row last column is different uh, 0 and 1 respectively and you have the 1 by f parameter in the last row which is basically takes care of the projection um, 
uh, transformation uh, parameter and, the, and and you can use this MPAR for both the two models in the two expression use P as your homogeneous coordinate system P x y z 1 use MPAR post multiply that by P or P pre multiplied by the M perspective transformation matrix and you get P prime uh, which is, will be basically in 2D homogeneous form and you can get your expressions which are expressed in a linear or non-linear and linear form as given in the true models on the top. So, we stop here with the discussion on perspective geometry which we have discussed so far and we continue next uh, class with a few uh, um, discussions on perspective geometry and also on the orthographic uh, transformation matrices or orthographic projections which we have not touched upon in this class. We will start with uh, a few discussions or extensions of perspective geometry and then finally, the orthographic geometry in the next class. Thank you.